You wonder why we lost the war, the grizzled veteran growled, sipping his drink. His compound eyes reflected the dim light of the space station bar, his mandibles twitching with grim amusement. Go ahead, ask me why. The young journalist leaned in, her antennae twitching with curiosity. She'd heard whispers of the infamous human conflict, but first-hand accounts were rare. Most veterans refused to talk about it, preferring to bury the memories. She couldn't reconcile their defeat with the Empire's reputed military superiority. The veteran let out a harsh, grating laugh. You think it was because of their numbers? Their tech? No. We never stood a chance. Not against the psychotic primates. The journalist blinked in surprise. Psychotic primates? Let me explain something about humans, the veteran began, taking another long sip. You think you understand violence? You think you understand war? You don't know a damn thing. He set his drink down, his mandibles clenching. What you need to know is this. Long before they left their gravity well, humans turned warfare into an art form. But with our plasma weapons and energy shields, the journalists started. They laughed at us, the veteran interrupted, leaning forward. While we were perfecting plasma weapons, they were perfecting ways to kill each other with sharp metal and sophisticated explosives. Primitive? Sure, but terrifyingly effective. He paused, his gaze distant. Our first engagement with a human army. We deployed our best strategies, perfect geometric formations optimized by AI. Do you know what they did? The journalist shook her head, captivated. They smiled. Then they got to work. We thought it was about tungsten rods or railguns. But what they had were rods from God. Ever heard of them? They dropped telephone poles, huge pieces of metal, from orbit. No radiation. No energy signals. Just pure kinetic death from above. The journalist's antennae drooped. But we had superior numbers. The veteran barked another laugh. And humans love being outnumbered. It's like a sport to them. While we trained for efficiency and logic, they played games. War games. Simulations more complex than our best strategies. Their civilians, children even, spent more time thinking about tactical scenarios than our military strategists. But simulations aren't real combat, she argued. The veteran's compound eyes gleamed. Exactly. That's why they didn't stop there. Every human child grows up playing capture the flag, paintball, and laser tag. They made combat into entertainment. And the scariest part. He leaned closer, his voice dropping to a whisper. Their creativity. The journalist shuddered. Creativity. Humans don't see war as science. They see it as a possibility. Take the Battle of Imus. We had them cornered. Every tactical calculation said they were finished. What did they do? Blew up their own antimatter reactors, fried their systems and ours, and launched boarding parties with chemical rockets. He shook his head. Do you know what it's like to fight humans in close quarters? They use weapons that don't just kill. They hurt. Hot metal. Explosions. And they sang. They sang an old war song about parachute failures while charging into battle. The journalist's jaws twitched nervously. Surely their limitations caused mistakes. We thought so too, the veteran said, his voice tinged with bitterness. But to humans, technology is just a tool. Plasma rifles, ballistic weapons, quantum computers, mechanical systems, they use whatever works and their ships. Brutal, over-engineered monstrosities. Layers of armor instead of energy shields. They're designed to take a hit and keep fighting. He drained his cup and gestured broadly. They weaponized everything. 
energy weapons, biological weapons, even information. They studied our culture, psychology, and social structures. Then they used that knowledge against us. By the end of the war, our troops were surrendering because they believed humans could smell fear and would give them a quicker death. The journalist's antennae twitched furiously. That's absurd. Absurd. The veteran snorted. To humans, absurdity doesn't matter. Efficiency does. If it works, they use it. No matter how strange or primitive it seems. He set his cup down with a heavy thud. You want to know why we lost? The real reason? Because they enjoyed it. Not the killing, necessarily. Not the dying, but the challenge. The strategy. To them, war is a game. A puzzle to be solved. And they're damn good at solving puzzles. The journalist recoiled slightly. What did they do after we surrendered? The veterans' mandibles clicked in distaste. They invited our remaining leadership to something called a paintball tournament. Said it would help with post-war relations. He spat the words like venom. They shot us with dye-filled balls and laughed, treating the whole thing like some kind of party game. The journalist stared in silence, her chest tight with unease. That's horrifying. The veteran let out a hollow laugh. Horrifying? That's humanity for you. Laughing while they play their deadly games. You know what their civilian population was doing during the war? Building model replicas of our ships and vehicles for entertainment. Creating simulated battles in their video games. Writing speculative fiction in different ways. The war could have gone their entire society is geared towards thinking about analyzing and enjoying conflict. He leaned back, compound eyes reflecting the starlight visible through the station's viewport. So you want to know why we lost the war? Because we were fighting soldiers while they were fighting warriors. We were fighting with science while they were fighting with art. We were fighting because we had to while they were fighting because they'd spent their entire existence waiting for a chance to prove themselves against an alien enemy. The journalist was quiet for a long moment, processing this information. Finally, she asked, do you think they'll ever change and become more civilized? The veteran chittered with dark amusement. They are civilized. That's what makes them so dangerous. They've managed to maintain their warrior spirit while building a sophisticated civilization. They've got ballet dancers who practice martial arts and scientists who play war games in their spare time, politicians who hunt for sport. Their entire culture is built around the idea that you can be both civilized and dangerous. He gestured to a group of humans at the other end of the bar who were cheerfully arm wrestling while placing bets. Look at them right now. They're just having fun engaging in friendly competition, but I've seen what happens when you push them too far when you threaten their worlds, their people, their way of life. They stop being civilized real quick. And then you see why every species that's ever fought them has ended up either dead or surrendering. And what's that? Because humans don't just practice warfare. They don't just study it. They don't just enjoy it. They transcend it. They turn violence into art, conflict into dance battles, and symphonies. They are the gods of war. And the rest of us, we were just fumbling around with basic arithmetic while they were composing grand operas of destruction. He finished his drink and stood up, mandibles clicking softly. So next time someone tells you, humans are primitive because they still use projectile weapons or are backwards because they maintain standing armies or are uncivilized because they enjoy combat sports. Remember this conversation. Remember that every piece of primitive technology they keep around is because they found a use for it that our advanced civilization never considered. Remember that their backwards military traditions have been honed by millennia of constant warfare. And remember that their uncivilized love of competition is what drives them to constantly innovate and improve the veteran headed for the door. Then paused, oh, and one more thing. If you ever find yourself in a fight with a human, surrender immediately, because if you don't, They'll take whatever you're fighting with, figure out how it works, improve upon it, 
and then use it against you, and they'll probably be humming. A cheerful tune, while they did it with that. He chittered one last time and left, leaving the young journalist to contemplate the implications of a species that had turned warfare into an art form, and why that made them. The most terrifying warriors in the known galaxy. The humans at the end of the bar were now singing something about a grand old Duke of York, who had 10,000 men. The journalist decided she didn't want to know the rest of the lyrics. Some questions were better left unanswered. The journalist was about to leave when one of the humans from the singing group approached the bar. Next to her, he was wearing what appeared to be a formal military uniform. Uniform, though the abundance of colorful ribbons and medals seemed almost gaudy to her. Kaka's sensibilities couldn't help but overhear some of your conversation. He said casually, ordering something called a whiskey. Your friend there got some things right, but he missed the best parts. Her professional curiosity got the better of her best parts. The human grinned, and she noted with mild alarm that humans showed teeth when expressing amusement, a gesture that would signal imminent violence in most civilized species. Oh yeah, see your veteran friend there. He only saw us during wartime. That's like watching the finale of a performance without seeing any of the rehearsals. He settled onto a bar stool, and the journalist found herself unconsciously leaning away from his casual confidence. Did you fight in the war? She asked me. Nah, I was just a kid then, but I've studied it. We all have its required learning now. How not to start an interstellar war 101. He chuckled. Though honestly, it should be called how to end one really quickly. If someone else starts it, he gestured to the stars visible through the viewport, looking out there. You know what most species see. Resources, territory, and strategic positions. You know what humans see. Every science fiction story we've ever written, every space battle we've ever imagined, every heroic last stand and desperate gambit and clever strategy we've ever dreamed up. The human's expression grew serious, but you want to know the real kicker, the thing that truly makes us dangerous. What's that? We don't actually want to fight. We prepare for war constantly and obsessively, but our greatest heroes are the ones who find ways to avoid it. We celebrate the commanders who win without fighting, the diplomats who prevent conflicts, and the leaders who maintain peace. He finished his drink. That's what makes us the gods of war. We understand it well enough to know when not to use it. Your veteran was right about us turning warfare into an art form, but he missed the most important part, like any true artist. We know that our greatest works often come from choosing not to create at all. The human stood up, straightening his uniform. That's... Why we're here now drinking together in this bar instead of shooting at each other in space is because, as much as we excel at warfare, we're even better at figuring out ways to avoid it. He smiled again, and this time the journalist didn't flinch at the sight of teeth. Just remember the only thing humans love more than a good fight is a good reason not to have one with that. He returned to his companions who were now attempting to sing something about 99 bottles of beer on a wall. The journalist looked down at her notes, then up at the stars, and finally understood why humans were considered the gods of war. It wasn't because they were the best at fighting. It was because they were the best at understanding. Why not? She had her story, but somehow she suspected it wasn't the one she had originally set out to write behind her. The humans started singing again this time. Something about a buffalo soldier in the heart of America. She decided that some songs, like some species, were best appreciated from a safe distance, preferably from behind several layers of reinforced armor, just to be safe. As the journalist processed the human officer's words, she noticed something odd about the bar's atmosphere. The ambient noise had shifted. The singing had stopped. She turned to see what had caused the change, and found the human group staring at a news broadcast on the vid screen. Breaking news. Pirates had attacked a civilian transport near the Carina Nebula. Not just any transport, but a refugee ship carrying children from the war-torn Riel sector. 
The change in the humans was immediate and dramatic. Gone were the smiles, the casual postures, and the friendly banter. Their expressions had turned to stone, and the journalist felt a primitive shiver run down her thorax. This she realized was what the veteran had tried to warn her about. A new human approached a table, female this time, wearing civilian clothes but moving with an unmistakable military bearing. Without asking, she sat down. You want to know why we're really the gods of war? The woman asked, her voice quiet but intense. What happens next? What do you mean, those pirates? They just made the biggest mistake of their lives. They broke one of humanity's fundamental rules. You have rules for warfare. The woman's laugh was nothing like the earlier human's friendly chuckle. It reminded the journalist of the sound ice makes when it cracks. We have rules for everything. Codes of conduct, laws of war, Geneva conventions, rules of engagement, but some rules she nodded toward the screen. Some rules are written in our DNA. The journalist watched as the humans in the bar began making calls, sending messages, and coordinating with an efficiency that seemed at odds with their earlier hurry. See, most species think we're dangerous because we're good at fighting, the woman continued. But that's not it at all. We're dangerous because we have lines that shouldn't be crossed. And when someone crosses those lines, she smiles. And the journalist suddenly understands why some species consider human smiles to be threat displays. The veteran you spoke to. He saw us during a regular war. The officer knows our history, our preparation, our potential. But neither of them showed you what happens when humanity gets truly angry on the screen. Reports were coming in of multiple naval vessels changing course toward the Kena Nebula. Not just human ships, but vessels from every major power in the sector. The journalist Centeni twitched in surprise at how alliances, the woman explained. Another thing we're good at when humanity goes to war. We don't just bring weapons. We bring friends and allies partners because we learned a long time ago that the strongest warrior isn't the one with the biggest guns. It's the one with the most people willing to stand beside them. She gestured to the screen right now. Every nation that signed the Turan Accords is mobilizing not because they have to, but because they know that if they ever need help, humanity will remember who stood with us. But it's just pirates, just pirates. The woman's expression darkened. They attacked children, refugees, the helpless, and the innocent. Do you know what that means in human terms? The journalist shook her head. It means the rules just changed. When we fight a regular war, we have restrictions, limitations, and ethics. But when someone targets children, she pointed to the screen, where more ships were appearing. That's when you see why we're called gods of war. The human officer from earlier appeared beside their table. Task force is assembled. We're getting reports of similar groups forming in three other sectors. Someone's been keeping tabs on these pirates for a while. Of course they have, the woman replied. We never forgot. We never forget the journalist's professional instincts kicked in. We never forgot what the two humans shared a look. The officer spoke first three years ago. These same pirates hit another transport. We couldn't prove it was them, but we knew so. We watched, waited, and gathered. Intelligence built networks made friends. And now the journalist asked the woman's smile was terrifying in its calmness. Now they've given us an excuse, a justification, a reason. And that's when humans are at their most dangerous when we can act with full moral authority on the screen. The first reports of engagement were coming in. The journalist watched in amazement as ships from a dozen different species moved in perfect coordination, cutting off escape routes and isolating pirate vessels, executing maneuvers that seemed impossible for such a diverse fleet. How are they working together so smoothly? Because we trained them, the officer said proudly after the war. We shared our knowledge, our techniques, and our experience, not everything. Of course we're not stupid. But enough because we learned that the only thing better than being good at warfare is having allies who are good at it. Two. And who trusts you? The woman added trust as a weapon more powerful than any battleship. 
The journalist watched as the operation unfolded with ruthless efficiency. Within hours, the pirates were cornered, the refugee ship was secured, and then they waited. She said they're offering the pirates a chance to surrender. Of course they are, the woman said. That's the rule. One of human warfare's always offered chances to surrender, always provided an out because the goal isn't to destroy your enemy. It's not no. The officer replied. The goal is to make sure they never want to fight you again. And sometimes the best way to do that is to show mercy when you have every right not to. As the journalist watched as most of the pirate ships surrendered. A few tried to fight, a few tried to run, and none succeeded. And that the woman said, standing up, is why we're the gods of war. Not because we're the strongest or the most advanced or the most brutal. But because we understand that true power isn't about winning fights. It's about choosing which fights are worth winning and how to win them in ways that prevent future fights. She straightened her civilian jacket, and the journalist suddenly realized why her bearing had seemed military. The woman's clothes might be civilian, but the way she carried herself screamed Admiral. One last lesson about humans in warfare. The Admiral said, we're not just good at fighting wars. We're good at ending them, sometimes with violence, sometimes with mercy sometimes with a combination of both, but always, always with purpose. The officer nodded in agreement. The pirates thought they could get away with it, because they didn't understand humanity's rules. They thought that, because we sing and drink and play games, we're not serious about warfare. They forgot the admiral concluded that gods can be both merciful and terrible and humanity. We've had a lot of practice at being both the journalist looked back at the screen where the combined fleet was now escorting. The captured pirate vessels to the nearest starbase. The refugee ship was being attended to by medical vessels from three different species. And humanity had once again demonstrated why they were considered the gods of war. Not through superior technology, not through greater numbers, not even through better tactics, but through something far more powerful, the ability to unite others in a common cause to fight with both fury and restraint, and to turn potential enemies into lasting allies. The humans in the bar had resumed their singing, but this time it was different. This time they sang something older, deeper, more meaningful. A song about amazing grace, and how sweet the sound the journalist had heard humans sing several times that night. But this was the first time she understood why they did it. Sometimes, even gods need to remind themselves of mercy. The pirate incident had drawn quite a crowd to the station's bar. The journalist noticed a group of younger alien students by their markings, gathering around an elderly human, wearing what appeared to be some kind of ceremonial uniform. Unlike the active military personnel, his uniform was adorned with aged metals and weathered insignia that spoke of conflicts long past. Is it true? One of the students asked about the great memorial. The old human's eyes, crinkled at the corners, are you wondering about how we remember our wars? The journalist found herself drifting closer, data pad at the ready. This was an aspect of human warfare. She hadn't considered how they preserved their martial history on Earth. The veteran began. There's a wall, a simple thing. Really black stone polished to a mirror finish on. They are just names, tens of thousands of them. People go there to touch the names, to make rubbings on paper, to leave flowers and metals and letters. But why, a young Senton asked, why remember the dead this way? Because every name has a story, the old human replied, every single one. We don't just remember our victories. You see, we remember our losses, our sacrifices, and our mistakes. That's another thing that makes us different. The admiral from earlier appeared silently, taking a seat nearby. The old veteran nodded to her in acknowledgement before continuing. Most species build monuments to their victories, statues of great generals, memorials to decisive battles. We do that too. But he paused taking a sip of his drink. We also build monuments to our failures, to our losses, to the cost of war itself. But why, another student asked, why remember defeat? Because that's how you learn, the admiral interjected. That's how you make sure it doesn't happen again. Every name on that wall is a lesson written in blood. The old veteran nodded. We have a saying, 
Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. But for humans, remembering isn't just about facts and figures. It's about stories and emotional connections. He pulled something from his pocket, a small metal object on a chain. This belonged to my grandfather. He fought in what we call World War II, just one of millions. When I was a kid, he didn't tell me about the victories. He told me about the friends he lost to the horrors. He saw the cost of war. That seems counterproductive. One of the students observed, wouldn't that discourage warriors? The admiral laughed softly. You'd think so, wouldn't you? But it has the opposite effect, because when humans go to war, we don't just carry weapons. We carry memories, stories, and lessons learned in blood and fire. Every human warrior, the veteran continued, carries the weight of those who came before, not just their victories, but their sacrifices, their losses, and their pain. It makes us better warriors because it makes us understand the cost of warfare. The journalist's antenna twitched with interest. Is that why humans seem to approach warfare differently than other species? Partly, the admiral said. Most species view war as a means to an end, a tool, a necessity. We view it as a story that's still being written. Every battle, every conflict, every war. They're all chapters in a book that began when the first human picked up a rock to defend their tribe, and was still writing it. The veteran added, still adding chapters, still learning, still remembering. One of the students gestured to the news feed, still showing updates from the pirate incident. Is that why everyone responded so quickly? Because of memories? Exactly what the Admiral said when we saw that refugee ship being attacked. We didn't just see a current event. We saw every refugee ship that has ever been attacked. Every innocent. That's ever been harmed every time. Someone thought they could prey on the weak and get away with it. We remember the veteran said softly. We always remember. But it's more than that, the Admiral continued. We also remember every time someone stood up to protect the innocent. Every time different species came together for a common cause. Every time mercy was shown when vengeance would have been easier. The veteran held up his grandfather's dog tags. These remind me of something important about human warfare. We don't fight because we love war. We fight because we remember what happens when good people do nothing. And that the admiral added is why we train so hard, why we prepare so thoroughly, and why we build alliances and share knowledge, because we remember every time we weren't ready, every time we were too slow, every time we failed to protect those who needed protection. The journalist looked at her notes, then at the assembled group. So humans are gods of war, not just because of how you fight, but because of how we remember the veteran finished, how we learn, how we carry the weight of every conflict, every loss, every victory, every sacrifice, the admiral stood, straightening her civilian clothes. That's why those pirates never stood a chance, not just because we had superior forces or better coordination, but because every human who responded carried with them the memories of every other time. Someone tried to prey on the innocent and the mercy offered to the survivors. One of the students asked also because we remember the veteran said, we remember what happens when victory becomes vengeance, when justice becomes cruelty. We remember because we have to, because if we forget, we risk becoming what we fight against. The news feed showed the last of the pirate ships being escorted to the starbase. The refugee ship was safely docked, its passengers being cared for by a multi-species medical team. So you see, the veteran concluded, being gods of war isn't about being the best at fighting, it's about being the best at remembering why we fight, when to fight, and, most importantly, when not to, and when we do fight, the admiral added, we carry with us every lesson, every story, every sacrifice that came before it. It makes us better warriors, not because it makes us stronger or faster or more skilled, but because it makes us understand the true cost of warfare, the veteran finished, and that understanding makes us both more terrible in battle and more merciful in victory. The students absorbed this in silence. The journalist looked at her notes, 
realizing she now had enough material for not just one article, but an entire series behind them. The humans in the bar had started singing again, but this time it was different. A slow, mournful tune about poppies growing in fields where soldiers had fallen long ago. The journalist understood now that humans weren't just gods of war because of how they fought. They were gods of war because they never forgot why they fought or what it cost.